Hello everyone, uh, my name is Hannah Valenta, I'm postdoc in the Dedeka lab at K11 in Belgium and it's a real ple pleasure to be invited to Le Petit Webinar du RTMFM, thank you for that. And today I will tell you something about unmixing of spectrally overlapping fluorophores using intra-exposure excitation modulation. So first of all, we could ask ourselves why would someone use spectrally overlapping fluorophores? And the answer is uh, multiplex imaging, because simultaneous measurement of multiple components is, uh, is uh, essential to understand complex systems such as this organoid or, or small organism. And multicolor fluorescence imaging is an uh, excellent way to do that, although we are limited by the available spectra window, meaning we are limited by the number of uh, colors we can use at the same time. So one way to measure multi, multiple probes at the same time is to separate them uh, using another property than emission color. For example, it can be anisotropy as it was shown in the, in the lab of Stefan Hell, it can be fluorescence lifetime as it was shown in the lab of Marcus Sauer, or it can be light-induced fluorescence dynamics. For example, methods such as OLED, which is optical lock in detection, opium or sapphire, they use these dynamics. But for this method, usually the dynamics need to be uh, resolved directly, meaning it uh, has to lie within the temporal resolution of your detection system. And the resolution is then limited by the exposure time and the redoubt time of your camera, which can be around 100 milliseconds, but it can be limiting to your application. So in our method, we wanted to overcome this limitation and we designed it the way that it can, it can use also very quick dynamics that can't be resolved directly, but it doesn't matter. So it uh, actually um, expands the range of probes that can be used for multiplex imaging. I'll, I'll walk you through this. So one way to provide these very fast dynamics is to use uh, uh, photochromic probes which display light-induced on and off switching of the fluorescence. This includes reversibly switchable fluorescent proteins that can be turned on uh, by the violet light and then they can be turned off by the cyan light. As an example, I show you HeLa cells expressing one of these uh, RSSPs. And in our method, so you, we use light-induced dynamics to distinguish actually a green fluorescent proteins and uh, in our method, we use intra exposure excitation modulation, which, which give, us, give it the name NEMO. So we used four fluorescent proteins, EGFP and, and then FF trompa, FF trompa, FM, FF trompa 2F, which are reversibly switchable fluorescent proteins, and we measured some fluorescent decays for these proteins. And as you can see, if you follow the colors, um, EGFP is the static fluorescent proteins in the protein, it doesn't blink. But on the other hand, for example, if you follow the red line, uh, FF trompa 2F is a very fast switcher and we can turn it off very, very quickly, efficiently, and then turn it on again and again. So we use these fluorescent proteins and we uh, irradiated them uh, with the short uh, uh, illumination sequence in which the off switching light, the sign light was on all the time, and then we modulate the on switching light, the violet light. And for these fluorescent proteins, we acquired actually only four images. In the first image, already the dynamics is fast, so it can't be it can't be resolved by the camera, as I told you before. So we actually uh, calculated an integrated fluorescence uh, for this image, which gives us a certain value for each fluorophore. And we did the same for the other images. So we acquired image number two, image number three, and image number four. And for each of them, we calculated the integrated fluorescent intensity, which in the end leads a certain value, and which when we plot these values, uh, we can observe, we can get a distinct profile of each fluorescent protein. And this is beautiful because using only four images, we can obtain a specific pattern for each fluorescent protein, and then they're quite easy to separate and unmix. So we validated our method as a proof of concept in, uh, in bacteria, and this video showed you, shows you a bacteria that express a single fluorescent protein. So for example, for EGFP, you can see that there is almost no blinking going on, but for example, for FF2F, you can see that the blinking is very pronounced. 
And then we prepared a mixture. So I had a culture with the bacteria expressing only one single fluorescent protein. We put them together and we put them, uh, we immobilized them in an agar on the cover slip and we performed the imaging. This video shows you the mixture of E. coli expressing uh, uh, it's, it's a mixture of the four fluorescent proteins, and only by eye you can see that some of the bacteria are blinking, some of them are not, but by eye they're still hard to separate. So we applied our NEMO method and we were able to separate them and classify them. So in the end we were able to say which bacteria express which protein. And this is very nice. Uh, just to tell you how does the NEMO analysis actually work. So after acquisition of the images, the bacteria were segmented by a segmentation algorithm to remove the bacteria that are out of focus or to remove the bacteria that are that have non-healthy shape, only circles here, for example. Afterwards, we averaged all pixels assigned to a single bacteria in order to extract a fluorescent signal, which give us actually the fluorescent profile, the blink profile of, uh, of for each bacteria. And in the end, uh, afterwards, we classified the bacteria because we were able to assign this uh, fluorescent profile to a specific fluorescent protein because we know we know the fluorescent profile. So using four images, we were actually quite accurate and we were able to classify the bacteria with a precision higher than 99%. Um, so this was for the four images, but also with the two images, when you look at the confusion matrix, we were still above 95% uh, uh, in terms of classification of each protein which is also very nice, which is very actually good result for using only two images. And when I say two images, in this case, we used image number one and image number four. And when doing the ratio of these, we were able to uh, actually it was um, uh, possible to unmix, to, to separate uh, the bacteria based on these ratios. So this paper was published and, uh, and you can find more details uh, uh, in it if you want to. And but now you could tell me actually, yes, Hannah, this is very nice. But at the beginning, you were talking about complex organisms and eukaryotic cells, and we haven't seen any of that. So what about that? And my my answer is yes, we can do that. But we just need to adjust the method a, little bit, a bit and do unmixing per pixel. Because indeed in the eukaryotic cells, the structures will overlap and they're, they're in a, the fluorophores will overlap and it will not be nicely, specially separated as when we use the bacteria. So basically, we use the same principle, the same RSFPs. They're just targeted to uh, different cellular structures. So we have EGFP targeted into uh, membrane. Then we have FF drompa F targeted to the nucleus. Then I targeted the FF drompa F to the cytoskeletal structure, which is y -mantine. And then we targeted FF drompa 2 F to peroxisomes. First, we checked if we if the uh, in cell profiles, the blinking profiles, are the same for single fluorophores as we observed in bacteria. And uh, we evaluated the cell, so each line represents one cell, and we can see that it works quite well. It corresponds to the uh, billing profile uh, that we observed in uh, in bacteria. So this is fine. And here comes the fun. So this video actually shows you the mix of four fluorophores in uh, in in one cell or in two cells. And already by eye, you can see that in different image there are different proteins that come up. So, for example, in the fourth image, we can see the dots, which correspond to the ff 2 f but obviously by eye, they're hard to really distinguish. So we applied our method to this mix of fluorophores within cells, and we analyze them per pixel. The analysis per pixel, it actually gives an extension to NEMO, so it's extended NEMO, so we call it ex-NEMO in the paper. So, in this analysis, we use non-negative least square methods to solve this equation. In this equa equation, the D corresponds to the measured image. C is the local concentrations of the fluorophores, which basically means it's the amount of each fluorophore uh, per, uh, in every camera pixel. Then S is the non-response to elimination, which is basically the, the blinking profile of each fluorophore, which is known and it serves us as the reference profile. And also because the measurements are susceptible to noise, we need to add an error, which is E here. So by sol by in our analysis, we try to solve this equation to obtain C, to obtain actually amount of each fluorophore per pixel. 
And by solving this equation, I will show you a result of our analysis. So these are unmixed images of the video you show you I showed you before, and it's actually working quite well. We can recognize the structures, and um, actually we can unmix them while keeping the high, uh, the complete full resolution uh, of uh, complete spatial resolution of the of of the of the images. And here I just would like to show you a merge of these unmixed images. And I think there is really added value because we can clearly see the localization of each fluorophore within the cell. Uh, this manuscript uh, or this ex extended method, uh, now it's in the manuscript on Wire Archives. We submit it to the journal and you can, um, I hope it will be published soon. But for more details, uh, you can find, find them online. Voila, so in the end, I just would like to give you a take home message for, for this uh, unmixing method. Uh, Nemo is fast and robust. You need just four images to acquire and then you can unmix them. It's actually very easy to implement. All the videos and images I showed you, I uh, acquired them on the wide field microscope. So you don't need much to, to do that. You just need an Arduino to be able to pilot the excitation pulses basically mean to, to pilot the TTL pulses. And NEMO is actually expanding the range of probes that can be used for multiplex imaging. Uh, it, because now from now on, we can use also very fast switchers and we don't need to resolve, uh, we don't need to resolve um, them directly by the camera. NEMO is also applicable to photochromic fluorescent proteins and dyes of other colors. I showed you application for green fluorescent proteins but of course if you have uh, light induced dynamics uh, when using red fluorescent proteins or other any other color it's also possible it just needs to be adjusted in terms of wavelengths and a very interesting application is also for biosensors based on photochromic fluorescent proteins because these exist and it could lead to applications where you want to emit several analytes uh, detected by biosensors at the same time within a cell uh, so this can be a new way. Uh, it can open a way for new multiplex uh, imaging. And in the end, uh, yes, obviously cell environment is very crowded. And if you want to understand the cell chemistry, it's very useful. It's essential to image several components, several structures in the cell at the same time. And uh, our NEMO method is just one way, one step further to do that. So it opens uh, new dimensions for the multiplex, multiplex imaging. In the end, I would like to acknowledge Sievert Hugelier, who worked with me on the first manuscript. Uh, he did most of the analysis part. And then on the, in the second um, manuscript, I would like to thank uh, Raphael Vital and Cyril Roquebuche from Université de Lille, uh, who have also helped with the analysis. And uh, of course, I would like to thank my host lab, uh, which is the deck lab in, uh, in Belgium. You can find us on Twitter. And also, of course, I thank you for your attention and I will be happy to take any questions. Thank you.